CBS News. FDA issues warnings over sleep aids. Prescription of Ambien will now come with a prominent warning slapped on the box. The Food and Drug Administration is requiring labels and patient guides to alert consumers about possible side effects, which doctors have known about for years. They wake up for some reason during sleep and they exhibit behaviors. Uh, that that one would exhibit during wakefulness, like walking, eating, potentially even driving. What? <laughs> yeah, there have been studies. <laughs> it's insane. No, I knew that, but that's yeah. just really funny to me. I know. It's a sleep aid. <laughs> you could drive in your sleep. That's how good it's going to help you sleep. <laughs> Black box warnings are the FDA's most prominent warning. They will also apply to the popular sleep medications Lunesta and Sonata, alerting patients to the risk for potentially dangerous behaviors. It may be that some people are genetically prone anyway for these kinds of disorders and a medication can become an additional trigger. Dr. Nancy Foldberry Schaefer is with the Sleep Disorder Center of the Cleveland Clinic. I can't believe she's saying all these things. Nick. She says the government's warning is an important reminder that medication should not be the only tool for addressing insomnia. 10 to 15 percent of adults in America have a chronic insomnia disorder and very often they've been treated with these medications as a first-line therapy. Other treatments, not medicine, but behavioral therapies work as well, if not better long term. Those therapies include relaxation techniques and creating a better sleep environment. Because while side effects from sleeping pills are rare, doctors say they can lead to serious injury. Yeah, why would yeah. you want to be on sleeping pills? Yeah, this has been a problem of people becoming too dependent on sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. So I was really glad to hear her arguing for, you know, alternative therapies. Yeah. Fixing your room. Or that's also what we talk about, that we put our foods, our phones, phones somewhere separate. Very far away from where we're sleeping. That's yeah. a big one. We also have light blocking curtains. That's also really important. If you can't do curtains, you can get an eye mask. Yes. Yes. Keep your phones away from you, though. Try to keep the light yeah. out. I like to sleep in darkness myself. A lot of people swear by that sleepy time tea or melatonin, too. Those mm. are more milder you know, ways, and they kind of work with yeah. the body's natural yeah. Marijuana melatonin. also is great for helping yeah. you sleep. It really yeah. helps. You, you do that. Yeah, I do that every night. It helps me sleep. I went from being a total insomniac to sleeping like a baby every yeah. night. Yeah, or you could be hooked on Ambien and sleep yeah. driving. Sleep drive. <laughs> uh, NBC 10, Philadelphia. Toxic breast implants, FDA probing side effects on women. Joint pain, mental confusion, and relentless fatigue that began in late 2017, she says, gradually got worse. The former fashion model spent nearly a year and $6,000 seeing every doctor and infectious disease expert under the sun. I said, could it be my breast implants? He goes, I think you just diagnosed yourself. Shane had had a breast augmentation after surviving cancer and undergoing a double mastectomy. That was in 2009. She chose a textured shell or gummy bear style silicone gel implant. And in her case, it actually seeps out and gets into your organ. Jeez. Yeah. And it has to do with these textured gummy bear. That's the, that's the term everyone's using. Plastic surgeon Dr. Stephen Davis anticipates the U.S. could decide to follow Europe in removing the textured shell style implants. The illness may be more directed at the textured surface than the actual implant itself. But he says with implants being the number one cosmetic surgery in the United States, which grew in popularity between 2017 and 2018. Look at that. 2017, wow. 300,000. 2018, 318,000. So they went up 18,000 in a year. That's a lot. Yeah. Implants are constantly studied and safe. The subsection of patients that are really... And of course he would say that he's a plastic surgeon. <laughs> feeling ill and they may have a direct correlation to a breast implant is very, very, very small. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons and the FDA, 20% of women with implants have them removed within 10 years due to illness. Within wow. 10 years? But she didn't break down smooth versus textured there. No. And here's a the conclusion. 
Shane came close to not being able to undergo explant surgery. They said you're a stone throw away from liver failure. By mid-March, she had them removed. I woke up out of anesthesia feeling like, oh, I can breathe now. Explant surgery gave her her life back. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, Mark Cle Clemens from MD Anderson Cancer Center in, in Houston said that disease was linked exclusively to textured implants, and he said that he was not aware of this occurring with the smooth implants. So what's the diff? I don't know what the difference is. I should it's, it's just the texture. Just it's just the, so the, but the texture ones feel better. They feel more realistic. I, you I, know, the, I, I have everyone that I know <laughs> says the gummy bears the way to go. And I thought they were crazy, but now I understand what they're talking about. See, I don't know because I haven't felt any breast implants. So <sighs> we got to get on that. <laughs> but I like research too, study how they made just a very vague remark that the FDA does not have definitive evidence uh, demonstrating plus breast implants cause these symptoms. Uh, but they said that some women experience systemic symptoms that may resolve when their breast implants are removed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, really vague. Reuters, U.S. Environment Agency, says glyphosate weed killer is not a carcinogen. The EPA's announcement reaffirms its earlier findings about the safety of glyphosate, the key ingredient in Bayer's Roundup. The company faces thousands of lawsuits from Roundup users who allege it caused their cancer. EPA, quote, EPA continues to find that there are no risk to public health when glyphosate is used in accordance with its current label and that glyphosate is not a carcinogen. The agency said in a statement, Bayer said it was pleased the EPA and other regulators have assessed the science on glyphosate for more than 40 years to continue to conclude it's not carcinogenic. Bayer firmly believes that the science supports the safety of glyphosate-based herbicides, said in, it said in a statement. The company repeatedly denied allegations that glyphosate and Roundup caused cancer. Unfortunately, quote again, American consumers cannot trust the EPA assessment of glyphosate safety, said Nathan Donnelly, a senior scientist at the Environmental Group Center for Biological Diversity. So glyphosate is 100% safe? We trust the EPA now? Or the, I don't yeah. understand. I don't think it's... I'm not buying it. Yeah. Because we talked about the very high incidence of not non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in mm -hmm. people that have been around this mm -hmm. uh, glyphosate and the Roundup. Yeah. So I'm not buying it. We'll see. We'll see. I'm sure more reports will come out. Yeah, it's always a hot button issue. CBC, HIV drug found to prevent transmission of AIDS causing virus to sexual partners. The study followed nearly a thousand gay couples who had sex without condoms, but one of the men in each couple had HIV and was taking the drugs to suppress the virus. After eight years, not one of the HIV positive men had infected his partner. Doctors say the results are a powerful sign that AIDS may one day become a thing of the past. Interesting. Drug Report, CBC. On the front lines of HIV treatment, antiretrovirals have been known to reduce the risk of infecting others. Now the latest science confirms that risk is zero, a relief for people who are HIV positive. I'm excited, I'm happy, and it's, you know, it's, like, it's, it's a long-awaited news where for us to be able to, as a community, or people who are living with HIV, to, to know and to be reassured that, listen, we, know, we can no longer pass HIV on to our, our loved ones or to anyone who we'll have sex with. Gareth Henry is part of a high-risk group for infection in Canada. Together, black and indigenous people are less than 9% of the population, yet make up almost half of new HIV cases. Wow. In total, there are about 2,400 new cases reported in 2017, up 3% from the year before. And before I, we summarize the study a little bit from the BBC, Getting tested barriers. Getting tested still remains one of the biggest barriers to controlling the spread of HIV. This infectious disease specialist estimates as many as a quarter of people with HIV remain undiagnosed and untreated, which makes them infectious. Stigma is part of the problem. There's a lot of attitudes towards, uh, towards people with HIV that are unfair and unjustified. Um, there's a lot of feelings towards people who are at perhaps elevated risk uh, of HIV acquisition because of how HIV is transmitted biologically uh, that in turn pose barriers to perhaps doing the best that we could be doing at encouraging testing, encouraging treatment. 
The European study followed 972 gay male couples, where one was living with HIV and taking anti antiretroviral therapy, ART, and the other was HIV negative over eight years from 2010 to 2017. There were no cases of HIV being passed within couples over that time, and the researchers say around 472 cases of HIV are likely to have been prevented. In total, the couples reported having anal sex without condoms a total of 76,000 88 times, although 15 men did become infected with the HIV during the study. Genetic testing showed that none of the viruses came from their main partner. I mean, this is excellent news. This is fantastic. At the same time, you still want to use condoms, guys. <laughs> you can still transmit other STDs. Is that, is that a fear? I think that, that is a, with this. Yeah, that now people kind of take it as a sign that they don't need to wear condoms, but mm. you still want to protect yourself from other diseases yep wear condoms thank you so much for watching for more healthy talk show please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow.com slash subscribe it's free twitter and instagram at healthy talk show drop the w we record the podcast live mondays at 8 p.m pacific standard time over at healthytalkshow.com slash live love and light